What's up guys, it is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and yes, ah, oh, deploying Hyper-V VDI with Windows Server 2019. I think I did this video, a live video for you guys many, many years ago. I think I did it with Server 2012 R2, and I had to do it within my lab to do some testing. I'm gonna get you guys up and running with this video, and then later on, I'm gonna continue doing like the gateway setup and the RD licensing and all that good stuff, okay? Plus attaching an SSL certificate to your uh, VDI web access portal as well. But for now, I'm gonna give you guys like the basic stuff. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna right click on the start menu, going to go to run, and I'm going to type in WinVER, hit okay. And I'm running everything within a Windows Server 2019 build 1809 within my testing lab. Again, I'm testing stuff out before I deploy it into the production world. I need to set the environment up. So I went inside my Fire Explorer, not really best practice, went inside C drive and I created two folders, an ISO folder and a VM folder. The VM folder, this is where I'm going to drop my, uh, my template, which I'm gonna go over pretty soon. And the ISO, because I'm gonna be downloading like a Windows 10 ISO and I wanna drop it in there. Now, best practice in the production world, you're not going to drop it inside the C drive. Most likely, you're going to drop it into your secondary partition, like a D drive. Within my ISO folder, I already dropped in a Windows 10 LTSB uh, ISO because that's what I'm going to use for my template. I'm going to click on Start, and I'm going to click on Server Manager, and it's going to start loading up. And once it loads up, the first thing that we need to do is click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. You're going to get the Add Roles and Features wizard. Just click on Next. Next again, next again, a lot of next, 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 next. So the first role that we need to install within our server is Hyper-V. Now I'm going to do everything in one box. Best practice is you're installing Hyper-V on a separate machine, you're installing your RDS stuff on another machine. But for this video, I'm doing everything in one solid machine just for testing purposes. And then later on, I'm gonna replicate it within a production environment. From here, we are going to select Hyper-V. It's gonna want you to select uh, required features. Just hit add features, hit next here, next again, next again. Now, one of the key things that I learned is one, for this to work properly for Hyper-V slash RDS slash VDI infrastructure to work correctly, um, you have to have a couple of things working behind the scenes. Active Directory needs to be present. You have to have a working DHCP server and also a working DNS. Those are three very important things that hopefully you guys have already in place within your nine to five job. I'm not gonna go over that stuff on this video, so make sure those three things are working and are functional. From here, I'm gonna select my ethernet and I'm gonna click on next. Uh, I'm going to leave everything as the D4 here, click next again. For the default stores, I'm actually gonna change everything to the C drive, to VMs. Again, that's, that is the folder that I created with you guys early on. Click next here. Once you get this, check off, restart the destination. You're going to get this nice little warning. Hit yes on that. Click on install. It's gonna start installing. And once the installation is done, it's gonna reboot and done, right? Now, what we need to do is click on start and go inside Windows Administrative Tools and locate your Hyper-V Manager, let it load up, open it up wide, and the first thing that we need to do is create our first virtual machine, because this virtual machine is going to be our template that our RDS, right, or our VDI, or our collection, which I'm gonna go over pretty soon, is going to take this template, and it's gonna create multiple other machines using this template. I'm gonna right click on my node of my Hyper-V, I'm going to go to new and click on virtual machine. You're going to get the new virtual machine wizard. Click next here. From here, we're gonna provide a name and I don't need to change the location because it's gonna drop it at the default location, which was the C drive because that's what I told it to go, right? Uh, click next there. You are able to pick which generation you want. I'm gonna leave it as the default as generation one. Click next here, provide a you know memory, your connection, hit the drop down menu and pick your connection, your, your switch. For the virtual hard disk, this is really up to you. I'm not gonna tell you best practices 50 gigs or 10 gigs, so it really depends on you, okay? Click next, and from here, I am going to select install an operating system from a bootable CD or DVD drive. I'm going to do an ISO, and I'm going to point to that ISO file that I dropped into the C drive, 
and then I'm going to click next and then finish. It's gonna start creating the disk for me and then voila, we are done. From here, we are going to right click on our template. I'm going to click on connect. I'm gonna hit start. It's gonna start loading up. You're going to get the Windows prompt. I'm not gonna show you guys the whole installation of the Windows 10 because you guys should already know how to do that, right? I'm ho Hopefully you guys know how to do that, right? So once I was done, right, I was on the desktop, I went in, made sure I had uh, internet access, I installed a lot of programs like FileZilla, Notepad, VLC, made sure that the template was fully up to date with, with all the Windows 10 updates. And once everything is done, now you're probably saying to yourself, do you need to add it to the domain? No, you don't need to add it to the domain because when you're using RDS and you're creating your collection, it's going to add it within Active Directory for you automatically. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys. So from here, I need to right click on the start menu within the virtual machine, within my template. I'm going to click on command prompt as an admin. I'm going to hit yes on the user account control. Once the command prompt loads up, the first command that I'm going to do is a CD zip prep hit enter because I need to get inside the zip prep folder. Now within the folder, I'm going to run the following command. I'm going to do a zip prep.exe. I'm going to do a parameter of OOBE another parameter of generalize, another parameter of shutdown, and the last parameter is mode colon VM. Hit enter, it's gonna start processing the cleanup phase for the SIP prep and eventually it's going to shut down the virtual machine. Now that we have Hyper-V up and running, uh, we have our template up and running. Now the next thing that we need to do is install our RDS. So we are going to click on our start menu, click on server manager, it's gonna load up. We are going to click on manage, add roles and features, click next here, and we're not going to do a role base. So we are going to pick remote desktop services installation, click next. We are going to do a standard deployment, click next. And we have two options. We have session base and virtual machine. Now we are going to do a virtual machine based desktop deployment. So we're going to select that, click next. We're going to click next. I'm going to select my machine and just hit that little arrow to bring it to the other side then click next. The same thing for the web access. I want this machine to have the RD web access server. So select your server and then click on that arrow to bring it to the right. Click next. I also want this machine to house the virtualization host server. So select it, click on that arrow to bring it to your right and then click next. Nice little confirmation. It's going to want you to reboot the machine. And uh, so click on restart the destination server automatically because it's required. Once you get that check, you're going to see like the button deploy is going to highlight. So click on deploy. It's gonna start installing and eventually it's gonna reboot the machine for you. Once it reboots the machine and you log into your machine, you want to go into start, click on server manager. Once server manager loads up, you're going to see that the progress of installing the RDS is gonna continue uh, and it's gonna complete. It just takes some time, so don't worry about that. Once everything is completed, you're good to go. Not yet. We're going to close that up. On your left-hand side within the server manager, we're going to click on remote desktop services. We're going to go into collections. And within collections on your right-hand side, we're going to click on tasks. And we are going to pick create virtual desktop collection. You're going to get the nice little wizard, so click on next. Provide a name for your collection. I gave it BTNHD VDI pool. Click next there. We're going to do a pool virtual desktop collection. Leave everything as the default, click next. And if everything works out, you should see your template from here. So once your template is there, click on your template, click on next. I'm not going to provide an answer file, so I left it as the default. Click next. You are able to pick your time zone and also your active directory. Now on this, Right here, I didn't show you guys that I actually uh, told it what type of OU I wanted. I created a VDI OU that I wanted these virtual machines to be dropped into, but you are able to create an OU within your Active Directory and then just drop them in there automatically, okay? So click next there. Now from here, you're able to specify the user group, who has access to these virtual machines, and how many virtual desktops do you want to create during this process? Now within my, Testing lab, I only did two. Now you are able to change the prefix and the suffix. Now my virtual machines are going to be BTN-0, BTN-1, and so on. So click next. From here, we give you a final uh, count of how many virtual machines you will have. 
click next. From here, you are able to change the location of where you want to store your virtual machines. I left it as the default location, but you are able to change it to a network share, uh, which is pretty cool, right? So again, left everything as the default and click on next. From here, you are able to provide your users a profile, right? So provide the profile location here. And once you're done, if you don't need it, just uncheck enable user profile this and then click on next. Nice little confirmation and then click on create. Once you click on create, it's gonna start creating your virtual machines, which is a good thing. Eventually you're going to get this. Uh, this is a nice informative information at the bottom stating that you are able to close this like you know, dialog box, you could close it up. Now, if you open up your Hyper-V manager, you're going to see a new virtual machine. Again, mine was BTN-0. And if you double click on it to view it, it's gonna start installing the operating system and doing all that stuff. Now, eventually, if you just leave it alone, you're going to see that your first virtual machine is going to be saved. The additional virtual machine is gonna start doing its thing and start running. Uh, I look like it depends on how many virtual machines you have. If you have five of them, the first one, it, when, once it's finished, it is placed in a save mode. The first one, once it's finished, is placed on a save mode. And, and that's how it goes, uh, just to save resources. I dropped everything within an OU called VDI. You're going to see your virtual machines in there, which is a good thing. That's always a good thing. If you're like me, you're very impatient, and you want to know what's going on, just go back inside the server manager, go inside collections, Pick your collection that we created together, right click on it, go to task status details. You're going to get this nice little status dialog box. And as you can see, my zero was completed. My one is still in progress. But if you click on that button, refresh constantly like a madman, you're going to see that both of them are going to be completed, which is a good thing. And if you go back inside the Hyper-V manager, now you're going to see that both of them are in a state of running. And that's it guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I'm going to continue later on how to configure the gateway server, how to do the RD licensing, how to insert a SSL certificate within your web access portal and all that other good stuff. But this is to get you up and running. Uh, these are the first steps that you need to do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Do not forget about hitting that like button. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button. Do whatever you need to do. Punch it, smash it elbow it, do whatever you need to do to hit that subscribe button and uh, make sure you share out the video and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.